I want you to notice because our pastor's been talking about the glory of the Lord and how important and how reverent it is that we acknowledge the glory of God in our lives. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we want God to be glorified. Can I hear somebody say amen? And I believe that God's glory desires to be imparted within our story, our life. Isaiah, in his personal life, he was a young man and he was an upcoming prophet of the Lord. And, uh, you know, the book of Isaiah, I wanted to share with you, the Lord had put it in my heart to share with you the book of Isaiah. Because the book of Isaiah is very important to Victory Outreach. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? This is, if you don't know, this is where we have received our promise from God. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet there are a lot of prophecies in the book of Isaiah that have uh, come to pass. And in our ministry, in Victory Outreach, we understand that one of the great prophecies that God has given Pastor Sonny in the beginning was Isaiah 45, 2 and 3. That he, will, he has promised us to give us treasures out of darkness. Tell that person next to you, tell them, you are a treasure. But keep in mind, we are out of darkness. Amen. Also... He has called us, and God has given us a promise in Isaiah uh, 54, 2 and 3, that we would extend our tent curtains wide, and we will inherit the, the desolate cities of the nation. And how many you know that's where United We Can comes in? How we are reaching the world worldwide. Can I hear somebody say, thank you, Jesus. We're not just reaching California, the states in the USA, but we're going throughout the whole world. And then the last prophecy in Isaiah 59, can I hear the third wave say, praise the Lord. God has promised to give us and keep the covenant upon our lips that he has promised us that the des descendants, descendants, descendants will also be anointed with this prophecy. How I many you know there is a generation that is rising up, that God is raising up in Victory Outreach? And I, I don't know about you, but I, I believe that prayer plays a big role. Jesus began to say to the disciples and to de declare that my house shall be called a house of prayer, a house of worship, a house where his word is being spoken, and it's a place I believe that it should be reverent. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? Tell that person next to you, tell them, make it your story. His glory desires to be in our story. I believe that uh, in this time, in the book of Isaiah, very quickly, I just want to share with you because Isaiah, there was a king called Uzziah that had passed away over ruling over 50 years. And he had the favor of God upon his life. And in this moment, the glory of the Lord spoke to Isaiah and appeared in the temple. And in that temple, the glory of the Lord, as we just read, there were seraphim angels. And these angels also described in Revelations chapter 4, it talks about these angels that would go back and forth around the throne of God. And in the temple of the Lord, there in this temple where Isaiah was, he saw the presence of God. He saw the angels be declaring, holy, holy is the Lord. Now, we've got to understand that the glory of the Lord has been in our midst. If you don't know, if you don't realize, those of us who have been around a little long, we can tell when there is the Spirit of God moving in the midst of people in God's congregation. Can you hear somebody say amen? But I don't know about you, but I have been feeling the presence of God like I've never felt before. I've been seeing the declaration of the gospel being declared like never before. The Holy Ghost glory of God had been in our midst, whether you know it or not. It's been at the altar here. At altar call, pastor's been preaching on Sunday mornings, Wednesday, Wednesday nights. We've been feeling the, uh, the, the presence of the glory of God. Well, there's a reason why God gives us his glory. Do you know why he gives us his glory? I believe that when we look here, we can get a few insights in what we should do when the glory of the Lord comes upon us. When God meets us, because 
in this moment of time, the Bible declares that in the year that Uzziah died, there was a shaking. There was a shaking at the declara declaration of these angels. The post, the Bible says, of the doors begin to shake. And the reason why there's a shaking is because there's a shifting. Can I hear somebody say amen? There is a call that went out. A call of God that went out to a generation of people. Now Isaiah began, had to begin to rise. And I believe that every time the glory of the Lord comes into a person's life or in, the, in a place of a temple, God wants to do something. He wants a reaction. He wants to respond. He wants people to uh, get a hold of uh, the glory of the Lord because he's calling out. He's calling out. He doesn't just bring his glory just because he wants to. There is a purpose. There is a reason why God met you. In your hard times, in your circumstances, in whatever you were caught up, God has brought you into this house to experience the glory of the Lord because he's about to shift things in our lives. And the call goes out, the Bible tells us. The call goes out, in a time of prayer, the glory of the Lord falls upon us. The time of prayer in the house of God, when we unite together, God begins to call individuals. The expression of God is his glory. But before he expresses his glory, there is the holiness of God. There is the call that goes out. Now, I love this story because it declares the Holy Trinity. It declares, the Bible says, that a voice came out. A voice that said, who shall I send and who shall go for us? Just like in the beginning, the Bible says, let us make man in our image. It's not singular, but it is plural. We see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in the midst in the Old Testament. And God begins to declare to Isaiah because he's calling out. Just like in the days of this, uh, this time, I believe that God is calling people out. There's a reason why the glory of the Lord has been meeting us here at this altar in a time of the preaching of the gospel. There is a reason why God has selected you individually out of the neighborhood, out of your family, out of wherever you came from. There's a reason why you're in that home. He has selected you. He has selected your family for you to be a voice to the community that God has trusted you. There's a reason why God has selected this time that he has given us. Because he's calling out, who shall go for us? Whom shall I send? And of course the reply here was Isaiah. He says, send me. Send me. But before the call went out, first of all, we have to understand how we receive the call. Number one, we have to receive it with humility. Tell that person next to you, tell them, you got to humble yourself. In a generation that we live in today, hello somebody, we don't got a lot of humble people in our community. Can I hear somebody say amen? We've got a lot of pride, a lot of arrogance, a lot of stubbornness, a lot of rebellion. Can I hear somebody say, humble myself? He saw in the presence of the light of God himself. When we see ourselves in the light of people, we can always say, I'm better than that person. I'm better than her. I'm better than him. And then we put ourselves on Facebook, and you know where I'm going with that. With all the extra beautiful two-inch eyelashes. Man, I see some long eyelashes. Here I go picking on eyelashes. It looks good. Praise the Lord. It did some beauty to your eyes. I don't know, but man, I, I ought to try that on my Facebook, my Instagram. Maybe I can take these bags out or I mean, get a little softer skin. But how many of you know that's a lie? Filters, amen. Thank you, brother. But in the presence of God, there is no line. In God's presence, all we can see is the light of God and how we're lost people without him. 
We're so lost without Jesus. Can I remind you here as your big brother here tonight to tell you that we're lost without him. I don't know about you, but I'm lost without him. If it wasn't for the Lord in the beginning of my walk with God, if it wasn't for Jesus snatching me out of all the madness and all the treacherous way and all the ways I was headed to. And today, if it wasn't for the Lord that woke me up this morning, I tell the men of armor, I said, every morning you've got to have this attitude that it's a new day. I said, it's a new day. It's a brand new spanking day. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm alive today. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not where I used to be. I might not be where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Thank you, Jesus, do a work in my life. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're not in heaven. The second thing I want you to notice that in that humility, there was a provision of an atonement. And I know that you and I know that the atonement of Jesus has been placed upon our life. The atonement. The Bible says that the angel took the coal from the altar because Jesus had not yet been the atonement for all humanity. And the atonement of Jesus or the atonement of the altar of the coal touched his lips. And the angel declared, you're healed. Your transgression has been removed. I love the book of Isaiah because it declares so much prophecy. At Christmas time, we understand in Isaiah chapter 9, it declares a child is born unto us. A child is given. His name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. We understand that in Christmas time we hear that Jesus Christ is that Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 53, it declares about whom shall go for us, who will believe the message, because he was bruised for my transgression. He was crushed for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes I find healing. I thank God for that reality, that there's an atonement. If you've been battling, there's an atonement. If you've been struggling, if you've been in a place of sin where you feel faltered, like you feel like a failure, and I know that, you know, you hear the message that we're not perfect, but how many you know we should strive to be like Jesus? There should be an effort, but there also is an atonement for Je from Jesus. Can I hear somebody say amen? The blood of Jesus. Out of humility and out of atonement, the call will fall upon you. These two are vital that Isaiah begins to show us. At the altar, God will separate you. I'll never forget the altar calls, mighty men of valor, Sunday morning services, conferences, discipleships, that God would bring people to the altar, and I would hear the call of God. Do you hear the call of God? God has selected you. Tell that person next to you, tell them he wants to be in your story. His glory desires to visit our story. Just like in Isaiah here tonight. I'm going to ask the music to come at this moment. And I believe that God wants to do something great because there is a generation. There is a promise that God wants to anoint. He wants to put a call of God upon this generation of people. He wants to select, and all of a sudden, he, he wants to individually speak to individuals. I want you to stand to your feet at this moment. Will you be that person that will say, here I am, send me? There's a Z generation that is out there that needs to hear about the Lord. And I believe that the same word that God has given in Victory Outreach has been placed upon our lips to declare that he will give us the treasures out of darkness. He will do what God has called us to do because we are living in a generation, in a last day generation, where all the more, they call it the third wave generation, so, so that means that there should be a, a triple anointing, a triple anointing, not just a single anointing, not just a double anointing, but a 
quadruple anointing. That's what's going to be needed in these days. A triple anointing. There's a reason why the Lord had given our pastor that message. The glory of the Lord. Will you reverence with him, with me? Will you give him honor? Will you give him respect in this house? In the house of worship? We're not like, I'm going to tell you, we're not like one of those churches that say, oh, Jesus gave me a high five. Jesus is my homeboy. No. There's a reverence. There's a respect. There's an honor before the Lord at the altar of God. That's important. Humble yourself before the Lord. And in due season, he will raise you up. He will raise you up. Tell that person next to you, tell them, I want him in my story. I don't know about you, but I want him in my story. We're going to sing this song. I want the glory of the Lord to be in my story. The Bible tells us, arise for the glory of the Lord has set upon you.